Okay, the next one uh, we're going to look at um, just illustrates why we see several peaks sometimes. So this is a very simple molecule, cyclohexene. Again, it's from uh, Robert Lancashire's um, website. We, uh, I put, I put the link at the bottom. Um, but we're looking at the double bond there. Now you think there'd just be one stretch for that, but if we look in the region where the double bonds come, and that's around here, it's around where have we got here. We've got fifteen ninety seven. 1650 and there's another one that's 1681 so these are the this is double bond carbon region and we've got some other odd peaks here as well we've got one there and then we've got this very broad peak here because it's basically an aliphatic molecule so it's you're going to have lots of ch peaks there now if we click on this one the sharpest peak this is the one that's contributed oops not that one this one and you can see definitely okay that's a ch stretch you can see this bonnet move vibrating nothing else seems to be moving so that's the main contribution to that vibrational frequency there if we look at this one just to the right of it you can see the double bond slightly moving that's why you're getting some double bond stretching there but if you look that's a, a massive um, vibrational mode for the molecule and it, a lot of different uh, atoms are contributing to that vibrational mode and the double bond just happens to be part of that so that's why you're getting these different uh, vibrational frequencies around the double bond as well because it's not it's not a pure normal mode that's just um, getting its contributions from the double bond something else is taking part in that vibrational frequency and similarly if you go to the left of that um, sharp peak we've got similar uh, vibrational modes there so we've got the uh, Carbon, carbon double bond vibrating still we've got some little wiggles here so you see it's quite complicated and that's why sometimes looking at infrared spectra can be a bit misleading and confusing when you get more than one peak and that's because other um, modes are contributing to the uh, vibrational frequency so let's see if I can click on this one this nice sharp peak here um, is just basically um, an asymmetric stretch there uh, from the CH next to the double bond so you can see that quite nicely let's see if I can put some vectors on there for you oh, it's actually thinking it's it's getting most of the contribution from there but you can see the the um, this one's as this one goes in this one goes out so it's a nice asymmetric stretch for the CH2 group there and similarly if we go down to the fingerprint region and down to these um, lower frequencies or lower wave numbers here you can see massive contributions from all the parts of the molecule so when you get when you get in the fingerprint region it's really a very very complicated or complex uh, vibrational um, mod if you will and what I mean by that is uh, more than one part more than one functional group is taking part in that vibration and that absorption and it just happens to be very happy at that resonance frequency. The whole molecule resonates at that frequency. Okay, so that's that's the carbon-carbon double bond and why we get some extra peaks sometimes. So that's it for now. Do, do have a look at the theoretical video on infrared spectroscopy and look out for a few more of these examples as well. So bye for now. Mm -hmm.